What's going on? This is a little update during my break about the failure of my Toro business. Let me explain what happened. I bought four cars for hire car, right? That's going well. That's going really, really well. Done almost $4,000 from that. Uh, I've not had any vehicle breakdowns and not had any issues with hire car. Except I'll talk about something that happened with hire car that's a little crazy. But let's go ahead and talk about Turo. I'm running two experiments. I'm running an experimental hire car and I've tried to run an experiment on Turo. And what I mean by try is I keep having mechanical issues. I bought four vehicles for Turo and three of them had to have repairs. The first one was the Range Rover, $2,300 water pump coolant leak. The second was the Porsche water pump coolant leak and something else, $2,700. And this right here is very irritating. I had a long-term rental for the BMW X5, $550 rental, right? Prepping the car last night, and I get this warning message that the engine is hot and the engine's overheated. And I'm like, what? The little drive that was on, um, there was no way for that engine to be like really hot. So I went ahead and canceled that uh, rental and took the car in to my mechanic and water pump and some other cooling issues, 1500 bucks. So we're at $6,500 in repairs on these vehicles that I think before the vehicles went down, they made like 700 bucks. So we're to the bad of $5,800. And I'm just sitting there like, what is going on with the Toro experiment? I can't say this is Toro. What I can say, and that I had these cars checked out. I spent money and I'm actually, uh, I, I called them up and I said, look, you checked out four cars and three of them have had issues within the first two weeks of me owning them first three weeks I'm like what the hell so I want my money back because apparently I have spent $6,500 on repairs recently so what's going to happen uh, I've made a decision I'm getting rid of all of the vehicles that I bought for Toro I'm just waiting for the titles. That's the only hold up because once I get the titles, I can get rid of them the same day. So that's what's going on. We're moving away from Toro because hire car is, you know what car has made me the most money? The $8,000 Camry. $8,000 Camry has almost made 2K by itself. So the $8,000 Camry is probably going to be paid for in four to six months. And it, it's frustrating, it's irritating, and I'm gonna tell you something. This ain't all with hire car, but I can't say it's Toro. I can say it is the cars that I picked for Toro, and I'm going to step back from Toro for a few months until I can get some better cars because this is what I see happening. If I keep this current lineup for cars, all the money I make for Toro is gonna go for repairs. You just, I mean, there's a trend here. Three, you know, four cars, I mean, and they're not like cheap little repairs. It's not like a $200 or a $300 repair. We're talking about the $6,500 I spent in repairs, I could've used that to bought another car. That's what's, you know, so all this is doing is adding to my startup cost of this business, but I'm sitting here like, this is not a good trend. Uh, my first thought was, 
to buy only Acras, Hondas, and Toyotas. This confirmed that original thought because I am just sitting here beside myself. And the one that hurt the most is I had a $550 rental and the car nutted up. The car actually, I was just sitting there and the Porsche went out once before it broke. Uh, the BMW has been out two times and then it broke. And I'm just sitting here like, and then one Range Rover that I bought that has too many miles to list on um, Toro. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, we're going to step back from Toro. I'm not, once again, I can't say it's Toro. It's not Toro. It is the cars that I chose for Toro. And it's like $6,500 in repairs on some vehicles that I haven't owned a month. That's crazy. So we're getting rid of these vehicles. Um, now what's funny is I, I have a feeling it's not going to be that hard to get rid of these vehicles. Especially that Porsche. Uh, the Porsche, the BMW, I get them fixed. I'm probably just going to park them until I get the titles. Now this is what's funny. Uh, the guy that I bought the Camry from, he was a dealer, but he just gave me the title and said, give me 8K. No dealer fees, nothing, everything. And he told me uh, when I got my title that I was going to pay taxes, which was like 480 bucks. I got that title like two weeks ago. So it's pissing me off that I got to wait around for these titles, which may not come to June. And they're all going to come together because I bought the cars within two days of each other. So I'm going to get all of the titles for the Acras. I'm going to get the titles for all the same week because I bought the cars in the same week. But what I'm what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just chilling right now. I'm going to clean up this mess that I made because like I use the ca car calculator. I'm telling you, people driving crazy. The car calculator, and it was right about the Porsche, it was right about the BMW, but the cars have proven to be unreliable. I'm like, you know, I mean, it's been a hell of a week. I've been like, what's, what's next? What's next? So the higher car experiment is going to hit the pause button once I get these, uh, not the higher car, the Toro experiment is done. Um, hire car, let me tell you what happens. Uh, I get the car back from hire car within 22 hours. That's the longest it's taken for a car that was returned to me to go back out. Toro, I can wait around weeks. I had someone who wanted to rent the Range Rover in August. I was like, I'm not gonna have this car in August, so I'm just gonna decline your offer because it's gonna be gone. This car is going to be gone sometime in June or hopefully the end of this month if I get the titles quick enough. Um, so the Toro experiment is over and I've made more money on higher car with cheaper cars. Go figure. Also, um, one of the things that I, I've come to learn with the higher car experiment is I've been telling people that I will sell you this car with no credit check. And I've had like three people was like, hey, let's do that now. And I'm like, no, we're not gonna do that now. You need to build a relationship with me. I need to know you're gonna make your payments. So also with hire car, if someone, if you choose the premium insurance plan and if someone returns the car to you with no gas, which has happened a few times, Go ahead, take a picture, and this is something else. You need pictures of the front, the side, the rear, and the passenger side, and you need a picture of the gas level gauge and a picture of the mileage. Just take those pictures, because when you have to file your claim, they wanna see that the car was actually full before you rented it out. So I had all those pictures. So with the hire car, if they return the car with no gas on that premium insurance plan, you will get reimbursed for the gas. So, you know, also with hire car, you need to get 
their customer service numbers. I might put them below. With hire car, like I had someone that ran the car and the insurance wasn't issued. What you can do is call them and they can issue the insurance like that. So essentially, I think hire car is in the process of shaping up, fixing their stuff. So, so far, hire car has been the clear and distinct winner. Now, let's talk about the stolen car. Hire car, it's a chick, she had the car. Once she got two days late, I started bugging her. I was like, hey, you need to go ahead and catch up. You need to catch up. Excuse after excuse after excuse. My father died. I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Then we moved to four days late. And I said, look, you really need to catch up. If you can't catch up, bring the car back. This is the conversation we're having on day three and day four. So something happens where she disappears and we get to 10 days late and I'm like bring the car back she's like like I'm working I'm like no 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 you're too far behind you're never going to catch up and we're going to be playing this game as long as you have the car so just bring the car back let's cut our losses and move forward so I am on this chick for four almost five days to bring the car back bring the car back bring the car back bring the car back so we get to the point, I have hire car in on it. They're calling her, I'm calling her. And she's supposed to bring the car back last night at 6.30. 6.30 comes, 6.30 goes, no car. So at 8.30, I went ahead and text her and she's like, oh, I need to go to storage to take my stuff out of your car. I'm like, how much stuff do you have in the car that you gotta go to storage? Then she had to go to her mother's house and then some other stuff. So it's like, I'm up here, I'm up to like 12.30, waiting for her to bring the car back. And I'm gonna tell you a, a big mistake that I made, and I'm glad I have this office now. One of the things that I played in her pushing this on is she came to my house, and she saw how I was living. And in her mind, it's like, he good. You know, so if I don't pay, so if I don't honor my commitment, it ain't no big deal because he lives in the million dollar house. You know, he's good. Big, big, big mistake that I made running that business from my house because honestly, it has been years since I have dealt with the unwashed social lower class masses. It's been years. I, I typically don't deal with the folks like that on the regular and I forgot how they think. Because when she came up here and she, she made some comments that was like, wow, this is a really nice house. And she also made some comments like, this is the best car that I've ever rented on hire car. And I was listening, but I wasn't listening. Because she, she, she didn't want to bring that car back. She really didn't want to bring that car back. Because honestly, and last night I was through. I was like, okay, she playing games. She is playing games with you. And if you continue to play games with her, she's going to keep that car. You will be doing this for weeks if you keep playing with her because she's playing games. So I was like, last night, I was like, you know what? In the morning, I'm calling the police. So I woke up this morning and I called 911 and I'll explain the whole process. I wanted to report a stolen car and this is how it works. Now, when someone rents a car from you, and they don't bring it back, it's not actually a stolen car. It's called theft by conversion. So essentially what happens is you still get a stolen car bolo. So with that bolo out, if she had been pulled over and it still had the drive out tag on it, which would have expired, so that would have greatly increased her chances of being pulled over, she would have been arrested. And uh, I still had the option because essentially, I filed the police report and I told her, I was like, I filed the police report, there's a warrant. If you get caught driving that car, you will be arrested. So leave the key under the seat and tell me where the car is. And I ain't hear nothing from her, I ain't hear nothing from her. And then the cop, I called her, hired car called her, and the cop, and once the cop called her, 30 minutes later, I had an address. 
30 minutes later after the cop called her, I had an address. And she was like, oh, he really did do that. Because here's the thing. Uh, some people don't t take me serious sometimes because, you know, I'm pretty calm and laid back. But once I figured out the game that she was playing, that she was just going to keep playing these little games. Like, I got to do this stuff because I kept asking, like, what time are you coming back? What time are you coming back? She would never give me a time. That's a game. That's a game. So uh, if I wanted to, I still could prosecute her for a conversion. And the cops just called me and I said, I got the car back. Let's just go ahead and cancel everything. And this is something else too. Once you put out a stolen car report, it goes into the system. And I caught it before it went into the system because it could have been in the system and it takes a few days to come out the system. So I could have rented that to someone else and they could have been pulled over and arrested. So that's crazy. But that's how I got my car back. If I had not filed the police report, I still wouldn't have my car back. Honest to God. I, and this is what I was getting ready to do. Before, uh, I was getting ready to do a YouTube video with her name, with her picture, and I was gonna put out a $1,000 reward. Because between these $6,500 in car repairs and the $12,000 I paid for this car, well, $11,500, we're, we're at like an $18,000 loss in this new business. And I, I was just like, you know, I just prepared myself. I put myself like, okay, you know, we'll make it up on the back end. We're just going to put it in the startup cost. But if I had not called the cops, I still would not have my car. Still would not have my car. And the trick returned the car empty. Sucker was bone dry bone dry. I'm like, th this is a big issue. I've had people return the cars without gas like five or six times. This is a problem. So I got to put in my language and I'm going to start hitting them over the head. I'm going to start having a Turo. Well, Turo, I'm probably not going to put a, another car on Turo for months. You know, um, I'm, I'm probably not going to do that because essentially where I'm at is I'm moving all of the stuff. Like once the business starts making money, because I figure once I get 15 cars on hire car, that's gonna be about 12,000 a month. And when I get that kind of revenue, that gives me a little bit more flexibility. But I, I mean, it, it was crazy. Like I'm begging this chick for five days to bring my car back back and she didn't want to do it she didn't want to do it and i gotta admit the acura tls are some sweet rides i can i i'm just like she didn't want to bring it back and i guarantee you if i had not filed that police report this morning i still would not have my car back the, 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 this this was crazy so what's going on today i ordered 20 gps uh ignition interrupt things and I'm going to get them installed. So they, they'll they be here next week because essentially once I get the titles I'm going to turn those four cars into probably ten and I'm going to put the GPS I'm going to put that on all those cars even before I put them on the platform. That's why I ordered them today. I got to do some calling around to figure out who I'm going to get to install these because once I get those titles I'm going to have ten cars in two or three days. You know so I need to be ready for that because this whole thing has taught me because if I had the GPS ignition kill deal on, I would have not been going through this for 10, almost 11 days with this chick. After the second day, turn the car off, go pick it up and then put it back out there and rent it. So I probably lost 400 with the gas, I'm gonna be reimbursed for a higher car, but close to $500 dealing with this chick. And if I did not put my foot down and like, look, I'm not gonna keep playing with you because you're playing games. 
this whole you can't give me a time when you showing up you say you coming at 6 30 then 8 30 you 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 going over the storage then 9 30 you go into your mama's house then at 12 o'clock it's like can i come pick it up and i texted her first thing this morning no response no response i was like all right okay i see i see what kind of game you want to play and like i said i was going to put her name up on the youtube channel and offer a thousand dollar reward so fortunately for her, she did not get the embarrassment of a lifetime. But I'm not going to go through this anymore once I get those GPSs kill switch. Because like I said, uh, I feel I was fortunate this time because, you know, when that cop called her, it scared her. She's like, I could go to jail. This guy ain't playing with me. That really scared her. And literally 30 minutes later, I had the address. Maybe 20 minutes later, I got a text from her, the address, boom, 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 boom. So uh, th this is one of the lessons that I've learned. And like I said, you know, I'm coming here. I'm telling you about all of the mistakes I made, all of the things, because essentially many people come here on YouTube. And I saw a video where a girl was saying that she made $4,000 her first month. Uh, affiliate marketing and saying it was so easy. I did it. You can do it. And the girl's got a successful YouTube channel. She has a successful TikTok. She has a successful drop shipping store. And someone who is not new, who's not familiar with the internet, they're not going to have that kind of success. And that's one of the reasons I tell you guys the truth. The truth. Because that will help you with your businesses if you're operating on real information because you know there's some people it's like man you shouldn't talk about your mistakes it's a bad look i don't really care because essentially this is one of the things when i come to the internet and i'm looking for information and i don't like uh there was one guy he went through a similar experience he's, he's got a bunch of higher car videos he went through a similar experience because once again what i did not understand what i did not appreciate is the clientele that I'm gonna be dealing with. And there is a certain group of people who are hardworking, who uh, will do what they need to do, who I will not have these issues with. And there's a certain group of people that if they figure that they can get over, they're gonna try it. And when I called the police and she realized that I was serious, that's what got her to get a case of act right. So. Yeah, that's what's going on with the car business. I got my office and I am not doing any more pickups and drop offs at my house. Mm -mm, ain't doing that. That that right there was a mistake. Um, and another thing is also I had someone get a violation and I had to get on to him because it was a hundred dollar violation and he paid his rent. He was never late, but that would have because he paid like 600 bucks for the Camry. So that would have been $100 off that 600 bucks if he didn't. He finally cashed at me the money and uh, we got it. Because another thing that I'm learning, I'm really learning, is a lot of people want to go straight to the buy here, pay here now. And I'm like, no, no, no. So I'm rewriting the verbiage in the ad that, hey, we must build a relationship. We must build a relationship before we move to that. So if you can pay me for 10 to 12 months rent, then you can buy this car. We'll go to Kelly Blue Book, look at the mileage, and then whatever price Kelly Blue Book says, I will sell it to you for that price plus a little interest. Because at this point, the car is paid for. So, you know, everything in the down payment is going to be profit. The, the first payment, the second payment, all that stuff is going to be profit. And God forbid if they make 12 payments and then I have to repo it and then I can sell that sucker all, do it all over again with another person. So um, I'm learning a lot, but this week has been hella stressful. Uh, it's been crazy. Um, it, it's been wild. It has been wild. But everyone is telling you Turo and all this other, I, I, like I said, there, there's there's a lot more to the car rental game. There's a lot more. And essentially, I would tell you to get the GPS, the kill switch, and the second key. 
Now, fortunately, I have two keys for all of my cars, except for one Range Rover, which I could not put on Turo. But as soon as I get the title, that bad boy, I'm going to a dealer and it's like, hey, I want these two cars, I'm gonna trade this in. And I may have to give them a little cash, maybe a thousand, two thousand, that's cool. And get two cars for one and just get out of the Range Rovers, the Porsche, the BMWs, because when they break, they're expensive to fix. Um, and like I said, I've not had, and another thing is, if you're gonna have a luxury car, like my BMW X5M, which I sold to Carvana, I had one mechanical issue with it in three years of ownership. And I took it to the dealership and I got it fixed and there was some, there was some recall stuff as well. So, you know, there, there was, there was, um, I took, I take care of my cars, man. You know, if I ever sold this, because you know, I dropped a lot of money for some rims for this bad boy. But if I ever sold this, someone would get a really good car with low miles that was well taken care of. And what I'm beginning to see uh, with the Porsche, the Range Rovers, and I can't really, I mean, water pump issues, I don't really know, I don't really know. But what's gonna go on is in July, in June, the focus is gonna be putting cars on higher car, uh, probably give me a few months to come back to Toro because I got to come back to Toro with a different game plan because right now Toro experiments just costing me a lot of money and I'm not making any money I'm not making any money because oh with the Porsche someone on Toro put regular gas in the Porsche and the check engine light is now on and I got to get that checked out I may get that checked out. I may just go ahead and sell that because I can trade that in with the check engine light on. Uh, I may have my guy look at it and not fix it. And I may just tell him what's wrong with it and just get out of it. But the the Porsche, the BMW, the Range Rovers, they're gone. They're, they're, they're gone. It's a wrap for them because they're just too expensive to be fixing on. And I, I'm done with that. But... This is what has happened this week, the last 10 days in the car business. I got my office. Next week, I should have the stuff I need to put in for my dealer's license. I gotta get my bond. I gotta get insurance. I gotta get a file cabinet. I gotta get some other stuff. So that will happen next week. I may or may not do a video. I just like, you know, this, this week was so eventful. This is why I broke my break to put this information up to let you guys know because I would be, you know, if you want to buy a new luxury car to put on Toro, that's going to be your best bet because you'll have a warranty to recover repairs. But putting older luxury vehicles on Toro is a big, big gamble. In my case, it cost me $6,500 and counting because I don't know what's wrong with the Porsche. You know, uh, I got to run all that. Oh, yeah, because like I said, I'm trying to run all that gas off. But what happened? We don't have no gas in Georgia. I think uh, most of the service stations now are now starting to get gas. So I'm going to run all that gas out and see if the check engine light goes off. I mean, it's insanity, man. It is insanity. So this is what's going to be happening in June. I got to shape it up. I'm going to start a credit repair agency in a credit recommendation agency. And I'm probably gonna start putting together people's uh, holding companies and LLCs. I gotta shape all that up. I need to, like today, like, like I said, it's been crazy, it's been stressful, but today I'm in a better mindset. So we will see. But that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.